Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to talk about microbial exopolysaccharide synthesis and metabolism. So let's get started. So previously we talked about xanthine and about EPS or exopolysaccharides and their biosynthesis as well. So uh, giving a small introduction of xanthine. So let's proceed with xanthine biosynthesis. So xanthine is a EPS or a exopolysaccharide. So in this, we'll start with the biosynthesis of xanthine. So it requires a media of carbon, which can be obtained from sucrose, starch, sugarcane, molasses, and whey. Also, it requires a nitrogen source, which can be obtained from ammonia or nitrate salts, yeast extract, soy meal or peptone, and also a phosphorus source, which is added in the form of phosphate buffer. So these are the media source or the nutrient source that xanthine requires or uh, for the formation of xanthine it is required. So the bacterium we know which is required for the xanthine formation and the media culture or the nutrient medium is these. These are the ones which is mostly required for xanthine biosynthesis. So it requires a fermentation temperature or about 25 to 35 degrees and it takes a duration of two days at pH 7 so that the secretion starts in the log phase and continues in the stationary phase of growth. So the entire reaction is carried out in a bioreactor. All right. So in a bioreactor, the fermentation stage gets carried out, which is a general fermentation step that normally happens in a bioreactor. So a normal growth curve will be carried out since fermentation is carried out. So it will, uh, so it will slowly start off with the log phase then it will gradually move to the exponential phase and then go on with the stationary phase and then eventually to the death phase. So the highest secretion is produced in the log phase and the exponential phase, whereas less growth is observed in the stationary phase and almost no growth is observed in the death phase. So moving on with all of these information, so with all of these fermentation protocols on about all of these duration time, pH, and temperature, the xanthine biosynthesis is carried out. So after the fermentation is done, so how do we extract the formed xanthine? So the extraction is carried out. So the culture broth is diluted with 33% ethanol, which is later centrifuged to remove the cells and 1% KCl or potassium chloride is added. And the gum is precipitated by addition of chilled 95% ethanol which is alcohol precipitation method. So overall, the culture or the xanthine is extracted with the help of alcohol precipitation method. So the culture broth, which is produced after fermentation after two days, which, uh, which is then diluted with 33% ethanol, and then it is centrifuged so that the two layers get separated out. And then 1% KCL is added. So after addition of KCL, the the uh, leftover precipitate is precipitated with or added with 95% ethanol so that we can get a layer of uh, xanthine on top of it. So this was the extraction of xanthine. All right. So this is a uh, stage wise procedure for xanthine biosynthesis. So all of the uh, in a bioreactor, all of the a maintenance condition is maintained such as uh, nutrient condition, broth, the inoculum, the growth and all of this is maintained. We can start off with the fermentation process. So as soon as the fermentation is started, uh, the, it forms leads to the formation of formation, fermentation broth after a certain period of time. So when the fermentation ends, so when the fermentation ends, we need to pick up that uh, or we need to collect that fermentation broth that is formed then we need to process it through our various mixtures or various processes such as pasteurization, such as heating. Pasteurization is basically heating at a certain temperature to kill the microorganisms. Then scent removal is carried out uh, with the help of centrifugation. Then we need to carry it out with precipitation. Precipitation is generally carried out with alcohol precipitation method by addition of 95% ethanol. And then all of the steps gets carried out for more purification and better extraction. All right, so it leads to the formation of gum, xanthine gum. So the xanthine gum is precipitated with the help of alcohol at last. So this was the process of xanthine biosynthesis. So with this, so talking about the application of xanthine. 
So it has lots of application as you can see as petroleum, textile, paints, ink, ceramics, paper pulp, adhesives, food. And the applications can be for petroleum, it can be flocculent and a lubricant, textile, it can be suspending agents. For paints and ink, it can be stabilizers and emulsifiers. For ceramics, it can be suspending agents in ceramic razors. Paper and pulp can be rheology modifier for high size press and roll coating. Adhesives can be used to control viscosity and uh, modify flow. And for food, it's basically for improving texture and increasing the shelf life. So, it, uh, so it, these are the basic applications of sand things. There are many more applications there as well. But these were some of the important applications. That's why I listed them out. So moving on with this. So talking about the second EPS or exopolysaccharide, which is dextrin. So dextrins are complex branched glucan of various chain lengths, which can be about 3 to 2000 kilodaltons. All right. So these are the, some of the bacteriums or microbes which lead to the formation of dextrin, which help in the biosynthesis of the dextrin. So these are the, some of the bacteriums all right, or microbes. So also, uh, as we know, uh, dextrin is a complex branch glucon, so it's a, it would be a lengthy process for the extraction and we'll study on in my coming videos as well. So moving on with this, so some of the bacterium are acetobacter, beta bacterium, streptobacterium, and there are many more. With this so talking about the biosynthesis part just as we talked about the xanthine biosynthesis so it requires definitely a media or carbon source or basically a nutrient source for its growth in a fermentation broth or in that uh, what is carried out in a bioreactor so some of the media that is required is the carbon source nitrogen source and some of the growth factors so growth factors is required for zeka dextrin formation such as nicotinic acid, thiamine, panthotenic acid, biotin. So these are some of the important growth factors that helps in the biosynthesis of dextrin along with nitrogen and carbon source. Also, treatment with nit uh, nitrosoguanidin resulted in the selection of mutant which uh, produced 300 more, uh, times more enzymes than the parent strain. So this is a particular mutant strain. All right, so treatment with Nitrosoguanidin, which is a mutagen, resulted in the selection of a mutant. So, mutant uh, selection of a mutant means this is the bacterium which leads to the formation of dextrin. And with the uh, use of mutant, mutagen, sorry, so with the use of mutagen such as nitroguanidin, it leads to production of more of this de uh, dextrin. So, you can just uh, re uh, uh, understand that or read on that. Nitrosoguanidin helps in the formation of more of uh, dextrin. So it helps in the multiplication or formation of dextrin with the help of a mutant strain such as L mesenteroids, which is a bacterium for dextrin formation. So nitrosoguanidin is a mutagen which helps in the multiplication of uh, these enzymes or formation of more of these enzymes than the original parent strain. All right. So these are some of the complications that have led to in the recent times for production of more of these EPS or exopolysaccharides. So with the help of these mutagens and more of the chemical treatment methods, we can find or we can uh, it can lead to formation of more of these EPS. So moving on with this. So talking about the biosynthesis part, so we just talked about the nutrient medium. So talking about the conventional method, how the entire biosynthesis is carried out. So the operative production factors is initially the pH is generally the same as all of the EPS. It is generally around 6 to 7 and the temperature is about 25 degrees and it requires an initial sucrose concentration, which is about 2% and fermentation is time is about 1 to 2 days or 24 to 48 hours. And dextrin is harvested by alcohol precipitation, same as xanthine and also through uh, redissolution in water and purified by further precipitation. Also cell debris is removed by centrifugation. So this, these, all of these steps, all of the pH, the temperature and the fermentation time and the extraction of it through alcohol precipitation and centrifugation is more or less similar to xanth uh, xanthine biosynthesis. All right, so, come, uh, so we just talked about the conventional method, how we can synthesize Bias, uh, dextrin 
and talk about the faster method which is the enzymatic method so in this what happens is it's a controlled reaction or a controlled condition and yields a purer polymer enzyme production is 23 degrees and ph is definitely 6.5 to 7 which is happens through a mutant strain of l mesenteroids so as you can see so the production is more with the help of this mutant strain so generally if we use a azotobacter or normal bacterium we would we are the yield or the final product won't be that much which is used in the conventional method whereas in the enzymatic method if we use a mutant strain such as in this case we have l mesenteroids b 512 uh, fmc the yield is much more higher or it's huge the yield is like very much it's like 10 times 20 times more than the conventional method whereas all the temperatures and the ph conditions are all the same so nothing is different but just the mutant strain makes the difference between the two so this is the enzymatic method which leads to a lot of yield in dextrate biosynthesis done with this talking about the application of dextra so it's used in bakery products it's used as in emulsifying and thickening agents also used in cefadex or separation of pharmacy and dextrin also uh, iron dextrin is used to alleviate iron deficiency anemia and it is used as an anticoagulant antiviral agent paper products oil drilling soil conditioners and surgical sutures sutures so these are some of the applications of dextrins so you can just read on to them so these are some easy applications of dextrin as well as in xanthin i just read out so moving over the ghrelin so let's just keep this video till here i'll be discussing about ghrelin and its biosynthesis and all of the procedures in my next video so hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more